This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Something very, very special came to my mind today while I was doing my Idvo Dedut. When a person is doing it by the dut, when he dedicates a certain time in the day for himself, for his relationship with Hashem, with the Creator, so then spiritual bounty and wisdom can start cleaning him from inside. When the person is always busy and occupied and, and disturbed, he cannot sense Hashem, he cannot feel Hashem. He can maybe think about Hashem, he can maybe want to be close to Hashem, but really to feel closeness to Hashem, for that you need to be quiet and relax. Like that Hashem said to Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the Prophet, Hashem told him, that when Hashem speaks, so He speaks in quiet, in silent voice. We called Mamadaka, silent, thin, gentle, quiet. That's how Hashem is speaking. In the book Tana de Be'eliyahu, words of Torah that been said by Eliyahu Anavi to a huge genius and righteous man in an ancient generation that his name was Rav Anan. And Rav Anan wrote those conversations and words of Torah speeches that he heard from Eliyahu Anavi. And Eliyahu Anavi is telling his story, part of his life to Rav Anan. And he's telling him that once Hashem sent Eliyahu Anavi to speak to the king. Rechavam. And Rechavam, he was an evil king. He was sinning, a very corrupt king, doing horrible things to his people, to his nation, to the world. Was not a holy believer. He was not a righteous man. So Eliyahu Navi had to go to him and to rebuke him and to argue with him. And it was a battle, it was a fight, it was a big argument between them. And in the end of that conversation Eliyahu Navi decreed that three years there will be no rain and it will be drought and, 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 and sorrow. And then he went, Hashem sent him to go and eat something, to drink something. And in the power of that meal, of that little food that he ate, little drink that he drank, he walked for 40 days and 40 nights didn't eat, didn't drink, nothing. In the power of that food and little bit of drink that he drank, he was walking for 40 days and 40 nights. Nice, right? He found himself after 40 days and 40 nights, like Moshe Rabbeinu, standing under the Mount of Sinai. And over there Hashem hint him how to get into the same cave the same place that Hashem in an earlier generation revealed Himself to Moshe, to Moshe Rabbeinu, in the burning bush. And over there Hashem is Barach, all of that is the testament of Eliyahu Himself telling what happened with Him. He doesn't have no reason to lie, saying the truth. And then Hashem asked him, Okay Eliyahu, do you have something to say? 
And Eliyahu was so upset, he was so angry, he was so frustrated. Am Israel were sinning in that generation. They were following foreign idols and worshipping them and they did not believe in Hashem. And he was so disappointed and he had so much grief and sorrow and he just said those bad things that he had on his chest. So finally he's got someone to speak with, Hashem. So he said, so Hashem in Dvarach told him, listen, when you want to talk to Hashem, so the voice of Hashem is not coming in thunders, is not coming with fire. The voice of Hashem is not coming in clouds, not in noise. If you want to speak with Hashem, so the voice of Hashem is coming in silence. They called the mamadaka, thin and gentle, quiet. In that Hashem tried to rebuke Eliyahu Navi to open his eyes to tell him, relax, for the days you were walking. Look at the miracles that I'm doing with you. You were able not to eat and not to drink for 40 days. Look at the power of Hashem. Look at the power of God. Relax, let's talk. Benachat, quietly, calmly. Eliyahu Navi didn't got that message. And Hashem told him, take three hours. That's how it's written in the book Tana de Beliau that's been written by Rab Anan. Take three hours to think about what that I just told you and then come back. And Eliyahu Navi went for three hours of Hidbodadut, being alone, thinking what did, what did he said and what did Hashem answer to him. And after three hours he came and he was still upset. So he opened his mouth again, Hashem asked him, okay, now what do you want to say? So he kept on complaining. He still had something on his chest, so he had to say it. So he did. So Hashem Barach told him, listen, now after you finish, go and tell the king that I'm replacing him and you're going to go and crown another king and also go to Elisha the prophet and make him a prophet instead of you because you cannot continue to be a prophet of mine. Because when you're still angry, when you're still upset, you cannot defend and protect my nation, my children. A righteous man, a holy man that wants to go and protect The world must understand the real intention of the Creator. That's a testament of Eliyahu Navi, revealing his mistake, explaining to us after that Hashem Barach rebuked him and sent him to crown another Mashiach, that that prophet will be El Elisha, his student. And after that Elisha was qualified to be the next prophet of our nation, Eliyahu Navi had to go, had to go back to heaven, had to go and to rise and to disappear from this world because he made a mistake. And his mistake was that he still hold anger inside of himself. Now when you have anger and you think that Hashem Barach got anger, so you misunderstanding Hashem Barach at all completely. You don't see clearly. You don't really get the point and the real message of the Creator. When Moshe Rabbeinu saw the will of Hashem Barach, he realized that Hashem Barach wants to protect and defend and save Am Israel. Even if Hashem Himself is not saying it, and even if Hashem Barach is saying something opposite, and Hashem Barach is saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, Heref mimeni v'ashmidem, if you're just going to leave me alone for a moment, Hashem is saying to Moshe, to Moses, leave me alone for one second and I'm going to kill them all, I'm going to destroy them all. Everyone would think, oh, Hashem is angry, Hashem is upset. Hashem wants to destroy them, they're such sinners. 
משה רבנו went and thought, השם יתברך just told me that if I'm gonna leave him for one second, he's gonna kill them all. So from that I hear that if I'm not gonna leave him alone for a second, he will not gonna do anything. So משה רבנו went and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Bread he was not eating, water he was not drinking, trying with all of his power to defend and to protect, to redeem and to save our nation, the world. Because the real will of the Creator is that all of his creations will achieve the purpose, that everyone will know him, that everyone will enjoy his bounty, his pleasant, his greatness, his beauty, his mercy. And the meaning of the word mercy is that he gives charity to everyone, even to those ones that are not worthy. So all of that method and attitude, all of the time to think that if I'm going to do more, then I will receive. If I will go and do six hours in Bodhidut, so then Hashem is going to answer my prayers, is a mistake. Because the verse is saying, Before you're going to call me, I'm already going to answer you. The only problem is that we don't have that simple faith in the mercy, in the kindness of our Father in Heaven. That's why we're not able to enjoy from that endless bounty that He wants to give us all. Love that is not depend in anything, it's the love of the Creator to His children. Like that Hashem is saying to the angels, how can you praise me when my creations are drowning in the sea and we're talking about those vicious, cruel murderers, soldiers of Egypt? That even after seeing all of the horrific plagues that they got because of their cruelty, because of how mean and bad and cruel they were, and they saw that they've been punished once after the other, and they decided to keep on chasing after an innocent nation and to kill them, innocent children and women and elders and everyone for no reason, just because of their anger, just because of their cruelty. They wanted to revenge on nothing. After taking advantage for hundreds of years, destroying and killing and raping and abusing for years, and then also wants to drown them and kill them in the sea. Now, those evil soldiers died in the sea. After that Hashem decided to punish them and drown them in the sea. But while they're drowning, the angels wants to praise Hashem on His glory, to crown Him and to praise Him on how He judges the creation with justice and how that He protects the weak and how that He is making right trials and that everything is perfect. And Hashem, the Creator, is saying to His angels, how can you sing to me right now when my creations, He's talking about those Egyptian soldiers, are drowning in the sea. Rachamav al kol ma'asav. His mercy is on all of His creations. He loves everyone in a complete love. And He wants to help everyone. Now, when you refuse to get help, He cannot help you. But at least when you want to receive help, then He will reveal His godliness, His greatness to you, and He will let you enjoy it. How are you going to reveal your mercy, that you are worthy to receive His mercy, when you will believe in His mercy? That's the only thing that He's asking from us. What am I asking you for? Only to believe in me. Only to go in my way. What does it mean to go in my way? I'm not able to wake up at five. 
I'm not able to do everything. I'm not able also to support my family and also to learn and also to dive and also to run and also to, to do this. I'm not able. So what do you want from me? Hashem is not asking you for things that you're not able to give. Hashem is not a cruel leader. Rahmana liba bai, the Creator, the merciful Creator, He wants your heart. Give me your heart. And I'm going to lead you in a new path. In a new way. That you will understand the message of the Creator. That the only thing that He cares about is your happiness. Is your success. Is that you will find what that you're asking for. He doesn't need anything from you. You think that he needs you to memorize books by heart? That he needs you to stand every day holding the sitter? That you will wake up early in the morning if you're dead tired and destroyed? You think that Hashem wants you to suffer? Who taught you that? And if someone really taught you that mistake, so you must understand that he was wrong. And he might be still wrong and going and destroying other people as well. That's not the will of Hashem. Just only, What did you find that it's in your power to do? So do that. Now if you find that it's in your power to ask for Hashem to have more power, to have more wisdom, so do that, ask for that. If you find that you have money, and you find yourself that it's hard for you to give charity from that money, so... Maybe now to give money, you're not able because you're cheap, because you suffer, because you don't find that power to give from that money that you have. So don't destroy yourself. Don't give. But can you please talk about it with Hashem? An honest conversation. Take your problem to the field and discuss it with your best friend in heaven. Just talk to him. Tell him, look, I have money. Thank God you gave me money, but I can't spend it. I have that problem. I'm stuck with my money, and I cannot give it to the poor. And we're not lack of poor. I have what to give, but I can't. Can you please help me to give? That prayer will give you the power to give charity with grace. That Hashem will bless that charity. But if you're going to be upset and angry and confused and all stressed and don't know and the poor is knocking and you open the door and you look at him and he's your worst enemy in the world and you must give him the money and you're going to take that bill and get rid of that poor. That's not a blessing. That's not charity. That's not charity that will save from death. That's not charity. That's a mistake in Avodat Hashem. That was wrong. Don't do that. So if you're wrong, don't do that. Now you need to wake up and to dive in nets. And you're happy. And you want to stand in front of the Creator. Great, do that. Wake up at 4. Why to wake up at 5? If you're able, why not to wake up Chatzot? Wake up midnight. If you're able, do that. But if you're not, but it's so important. You're dead tired. You're going to drag that headache for 3 days if you're going to wake up at 4. But it's so important. So you're going to do that. And then at 9 you're going to get so dizzy. And your wife she's going to call you. And you're going to explode on her. And you're going to hate your children. And your boss is so annoying. And why she's calling again. That's not a Vodat Hashem. That's not the right way. That's not what you should do. So what should you do? Talk about it with Hashem at 9 a.m. When you're going to wake up, go talk to Hashem. Listen, Hashem, what's going to be with me? Every day, 9, 9.30, today, 9.45, Hashem, save me. Protect me from my laziness, save me. What's going to be with me? When He will finally answer your prayer, you will feel the blessing of Hashem in your mornings. Pikudei Hashem Yesharim Mesamchei Lev. When you're serving Hashem Itbarach in the straight way, in the right way, it brings happiness to your heart. When you're still sad and depressed 
and lonely and frustrated and down and broken to pieces. So it means that you're not straight, that you're not walking straight, that you're not honest, that you're not going in straight line. You're moving to the side, to the right, to the left, like the snake. And when Hashem tries to rebuke you, so you go to the other side, no, you don't understand me. No, you misinterpret my intention. No, it was not my intention. No, I didn't mean to say that. And you're twisting because you are bent, because you're not able to be honest and just to speak the truth and to be one with Hashem. Because if Hashem will wake you up at five, you will be awake at five. If Hashem will want you at shul at 5 a.m., you will be in shul at 5 a.m. And no one in the world will be able to take you away from that place. Because Hashem will bring you to that place. But if Hashem feels that you're not worthy and you're upsetting Him in the way that you think that you know how you should serve Hashem, so He will let you go at 5 to the shul. But it's going to be the last time. Because after that, you're going to explode and you're going to fight and you're going to hate and you're going to want to revenge and then you're not going to go again. And you will reject yourself because of your anger, because of how far you were in your mindset, in your understanding of the real will of the Creator. Hashem wants you to be calm and relax and breathe, and communicate, and share, and distribute the light, and be friendly, smile to people, shake hands of people, hug people, be able to sit and to teach someone, to support someone, to be friendly, to be inviting, to be nice, to be positive. You want to sell your product, you need to be nice. You want to reveal the, the, the truth to the world, you must be nice, you must be pleasant. I heard about some, I don't know if you can call him Rebbe, some person that said, if someone will drive to my synagogue in Shabbos, I'm going to kick him out from the synagogue. Okay, great. Great. Nice. And after 120, when Hashem Barach will look at you and going to ask you, why were you kicking my son out of your synagogue, out of the synagogue that I gave you? And you will say, I was trying to protect Shabbos. I was trying to defend you. Hashem will laugh. Hashem will laugh at you. Hashem will show you what makes Hashem happy in Shabbos? What makes you happy in Shabbos? To wake up early, that's what it makes you happy in Shabbos? If you woke up early because of noise, because of problems, because that your neighbors are drilling in the middle of the night in Shabbos, okay, so now are you happy to wake up early? No, you're upset, right? To wake up early, that's not why you're happy. Why you're happy? If you see your children wakes up, if you see that everything is nice and clean and the atmosphere and the environment, everything is cool and you can feel the blessing, the relaxation of Shabbat, uplifting Shabbat, you hear music in the air, you feel the connection, you emotionally connected to Shabbat, so then you're happy, right? But if there are fights and arguments on your Shabbos table in the morning, in the right time. You made it to shul, but the shul is full with arguments and fights and they're talking and they're answering and every person has something to say. Are you enjoying this Shabbos? Everyone came on time, right on time, 10 minutes earlier to fight who will catch the bima, the stage. Okay, so are you happy? No, you're gonna look for another synagogue, right? Right, why? Because wars in Shabbat, it's not your will. What do you want in Shabbat? Shabbat Shalom. That will be peace in Shabbos. That everyone will be happy. That everyone will be calm and relaxed and healthy and smiling. Oh, that's amazing Shabbat. 
to have Shabbat like that and to wake up at 11 a.m. is better than to wake up at 4 and to catch mikveh and to start your Shabbos with wars and with arguments, debates. That's not the will of the Creator. I'm going to kick him out of my synagogue. Wrong. Not the right way. It's not Hashem's will. Hashem's will is that you're going to hug every person, that you're going to show him how pleasant it is to pray in your synagogue, how amazing it is to keep Shabbat, and then he will not going to drive anymore. But if you're going to kick him, so he's going to drive back home, and he will never going to stop driving in Shabbat, and for sure he will not going to drive to your synagogue, don't worry. Because you will not going to be the right messenger to help him to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem. Why? Because you misinterpret the real intention, intention of Hashem. Because Hashem's real will is that everyone will smile to each other and will have peace one with each other. And when there is peace, so then you can talk. And if you love your friend, and your friend he loves you, and there is an understanding between you that you respect each other, so now you can talk. And when he will finish talking all of his heart, you will also be able to speak, and maybe then you'll have the opportunity to help him to do tshuva, and really to come back to Hashem. And it can be so great. Maybe he will start keeping Shabbat. Maybe you will be that one. But now after you kicked him out of the synagogue, so he's out. And whose fault is that he's out? Because he drove to your shul. You had the opportunity to bring him in, to explain to him the beauty of Hashem. The verse is saying, Tamu ukitov Hashem. Only after you taste you can see that Hashem is good. But before he tasted, you kicked him out of the synagogue before he came in. Because you heard his car parking in the parking lot, right? So you didn't let him taste, right? So how do you want him to see? But Hashem told you, let him taste, and then he will see. If you're not going to let him taste, he will never going to see. And whose fault is going to be? You call yourself a rabbi. But you're not a rabbi. You're a person that walks in a mistake. And every person can have that mistake against his children, against his wife, against her husband, against his friends, against his parents, against everyone around him. That when you justify yourself all of the time and criticizing everyone else all of the time, pretending to hold some kind of truth, you're wrong. Immediately you are wrong. Shlomo Melech said, Amarti echkema vehi rechoka. Only when I said to myself that I'm going to get wiser, then I realized how far the wisdom is still for me. How far it is. How much more there is to learn. How far we are from accomplish and achieving and knowing Hashem completely. Hashem is endless. Hashem is beyond our reach. You want to connect yourself to Him? Hidamelo. You need to make yourself like Him. Yes, he's merciful. You should be merciful. When you're angry, when you're upset, you need to remi remind yourself to have mercy. You're upset at your wife. You're upset at your children. Now you should remind yourself to be mercy, to be kind, to be merciful, to be kind, to have patience, to breathe, to observe to look, to think, to do tshuva, to try to understand what Hashem Barak is hinting you. Why she was so annoying? Why they're so annoying? Why they are destroying my day again? What Hashem has to say? What is the message of the Creator to me while they're upsetting me? What is my test? It's written, any surim belo avon. You never suffer without a sin. If you suffer, so there's a reason for your suffering, for your sorrow. So why, instead of rejecting the rebuke, try to receive the hint, to learn the lesson, to listen to the hidden message, to the quiet message that comes in silence, 
that comes in pleasant, between the lines, to educate you, to tell you. When Moshe Rabbeinu saw the Holy Land, he fell on his face. The Gemara is asking, the Tanaim are asking, what did he saw? What did Moshe saw that he fell on his face? And the answer is, Erech Apayim Ra'a. He saw one of the faces of the Creator. Which face? Hashem got many faces. Which face? The face that reflects patience. Erech Apayim. Midat Asovlanut. The ability to breathe, to accept whatever you go through in your life in faith. To know that it's all Hashem. Now you're standing in traffic. You're stuck. You're late. You don't know what to do. All of that is the fake illusion of the world of lie. That's not reality. The reality is only one. That Hashem Barach is holding you in a certain situation to show you and teach you something. There is something that you need to learn right now in traffic. So focus on that. Try to learn. Why am I stuck now in traffic? Now you found yourself losing your mind, losing your faith, losing your confidence in Hashem. It's not reality. Hashem can provide whatever you need in a second. And you know that. You experienced it so many times in your life. How many times in our life we were standing in that test of needing money and you don't know what you're going to do and you have one week to pay and now only five days to pay and then three and suddenly one day or one hour before of your destruction suddenly a light from the east. Suddenly a salvation is coming. Once it's him, once it's her, once it's the bank, once, once even the IRS send me money. Can you believe that? The IRS deposit money to my bank account. It's impossible, right? But Hashem can do that even. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one. Even the IRS can deposit money to your bank account when Hashem wants them to do that. So how many times we experience that amazing individual supervision, precise supervision of the Creator on us in an amazing way, perfect. You saw eye to eye the hand of Hashem running the world, sending you the exact amount that you needed. But after two minutes, two minutes, not more, you found yourself in the next test. And immediately, after two minutes, you lost all your faith and all your confidence because you fell in that trap of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination, to make you think that this world is reality. And again, you failed in the test of faith and you just lost your faith. So from that you should learn that the real test is only, but only, to count on Hashem. How you can count on Him? It's not a speech. It's not a word. It's not words of Torah. It's that effort that you put every time to come back to Hashem, to do tshuva, not to break yourself, not to slaughter yourself on your mistakes, not to blame yourself and criticize yourself. No, to come back from your mistakes to Hashem, to tell Him again I was wrong and again you were right. Again you saved my life and again I forgot you. Again you protected me, again I was abandoning you. Again you revealed your mercy and you revealed my laziness. Please, Hashem, guide me in the path of truth. Let me always come back to you. That is the only thing we should do in life, to remind ourselves again and again that there is a loving 
creator. That's it. That's the secret. That's the mission. And when you realize that, that he's so kind, that you cannot describe his kindness, that he loves so much, that his love doesn't have no limits, no borders at all, then you can see a little bit of his greatness. And that is the light that you should follow, the light of the loving kindness, the love to the truth, that your connection to the Creator will be based on love, on appreciation, on conversation, on relationship. Go with your hardest questions to the field and discuss them. Talk about them. Tell him, I'm afraid, I'm too scared. I don't have a clue, I don't know what to do. I'm so lost, I'm so broken. I'm losing my faith every moment. I'm getting upset every day. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my stability, my happiness, my joy, my satisfaction from life. Please bring that light back to my life. I want to live. I want to feel your love. I want to feel your warmth. I don't want to obey. I don't want to be afraid. If you will try to think with yourself deep, deep inside, I promise you all that you will find in the end of your investigation that Hashem never, ever threatened your life. Never, ever in your life you never saw that Hashem was cruel. You never saw that Hashem was vicious, that Hashem was upset on you. Never. But you went through some big difficulties. Yeah. Big challenges. Yes. But those challenges built you. Those difficulties brought you today to your humility, to your good attributes. Now today to have a heart, that today you can feel people, that today you care more about others, that today you can give charity, that today you can believe in Him, that today you can pray, that you received from Him a heart, a soul, emotions, inner wisdom, some life experience that helped you to help others. Some big gifts were hidden in the challenges of your life. So was it so bad? No, it wasn't bad. It was needed and required for your life journey to accomplish the things that are important for you as a human being. That only Hashem, He knows everything. He knows exactly what you need to go through. But I'm 40 and I'm still not married. But I'm 37 and I still don't have children. But I'm 52 and I don't have children. Yes, and I still haven't bought a house. And what's going to be with my Aliyah and with my Limud Torah and with my world to come? I hear you. You think that Hashem is cheap. That's your problem. You think you're going to lack of something in the world to come. You think that Hashem is going to judge you and going to tell you and going to shame you? Probably you listened to the same rabbi that was about to kick your best friend out of shul, right? So don't. He's not a rabbi. He's not a rabbi. He doesn't know the will of Hashem. The word rabbi in the holy language is written resh bet yud. Rabbi, resh Bet you, it can be two combinations, two main combinations. At least that, what that the crazy Rabbi Nachman of Westlev wrote in his wild book, Likutei Moran. What did Rabbi Nachman of Westlev wrote? That Rabbi can be or Rosh Bene Israel, the head of all of the tribes of Israel, means that it's a person that accepts everyone, that hugs everyone. He's the head of all of Bene Israel, everyone. He doesn't look on their wallets, he doesn't look on their colors, he doesn't look if they woke up, if they're educated, if they're from, from birth or from, from habit. He doesn't check nothing, he just loves Bene Israel. He's got that problem. He loves people. Or, Reshaim b'choshech idam. Evil people that will be silent in darkness. 
that will drown in darkness. It can be a big rabbi that will be quiet because of a very thick darkness that will cover him. Because he was not the head of Bnei Israel, because he was not hugging and loving and accepting everyone under the wings of Shechina, and still he was crowning himself to be a rabbi. Only a person that runs away from the honor will be honored by Hashem. A person that chases after the honor, the honor will run away from him. A real honorable person is a person that honors others. It's someone that can respect other people. Do you know why he is not keeping Shabbat? Do you have any understanding? Did you check why he is driving in Shabbat? Maybe he been destroyed in his house by an abusive from father that killed Shabbat from him, that erased all connection from love to the Creator. And still he decided when he was 36 to drive to Shul against all of his negative thoughts and the horrific memories from Shabbat. He decided for his children to take them to shul in Shabbos. And he drove to your synagogue and you kicked him for the last time. Now that's a rabbi. That's a rabbi. That will be silent in darkness and cannot be the head of Bnei Israel. You need to reveal the kindness of the Creator to His creations, and then you're a rabbi. You need to reveal the love of Hashem to His creations, and then you're a rabbi, and then you're a human being, and then you're a person, and then someone can talk to you and can hear you. And before that you are good and doing only good, no one can hear you. And if someone going to hear you, he will be destroyed by your evil inclination. So our effort is only to try to be as good as we can, as nice as we can, to accept and to love and to care and to show love and to respect and to try to listen and to understand that Hashem is working in mysterious ways. If they would kick me out of shul when I came in the first times while I was still not keeping Shabbat, I wouldn't save lives of hundreds or maybe thousands of people until today. People that wrote me emails and WhatsApp messages, you saved my life, or, or, or comments on YouTube or Facebook, you saved my life. I wouldn't do that if someone would kick me out of shul because I came with my bike, because I drove with my bike to a shul in Sfat, in Shabbos morning. And I knew that I was sinning. But I was in Tveria, in the Galilee Sea, with friends of mine, and I felt that I want to go to a synagogue. And I didn't know where there is a synagogue in Tveria. So I decided to go to Tzfat, and I knew that it was Shabbat, and I never kept Shabbat before in my life, and I felt like going to a synagogue in Shabbat. So I went on my 500 Kawasaki EN and drove for half an hour, 45 minutes from Galilee Sea to Tzfat, to the synagogue. And I did Shuva. And you would kick me out of your synagogue. Crazy. But I was so inspired in that day. I loved Hashem so much in that day. I was so grateful to Hashem in that day. My prayers were accepted in that day, in that synagogue in Tzfat. Why? Because Hashem in Barach, He didn't kick me out of the synagogue. He invited me to the synagogue and He knew that I was going to come with my bike. He knew it. He knew it. He knows everything. And He woke me up and He woke up that desire in my heart to drive. To use the bike that he gave me and to go to the synagogue in Shabbat. Not because that it's good to drive to shul. It's not good to violate Shabbat. 
What that is good is to follow the voice of Hashem. And the voice of Hashem is always telling you, breathe, be nice, have faith, try again, don't give up, have hope, speak with me, I'm listening to you, I'll answer your prayers, I love you, I care about you, I'm thinking about you. You're the only one for me, like an only child for me. Hashem is saying, And also, not only Jewish. All people, all human race, everyone. Do you know who he is? Do you know? Maybe he's from the lost tribes of Israel. Maybe he's from the tribe of Asher, from the tribe of Dan. Maybe he's from the tribe of Zvulun, of Issachar. Do you know who he is? Oh, he is Christian. Oh, no, he is Muslim. You don't know the size of your shoes. You don't know who you are. You don't know about yourself if you're Jewish or not. You don't have a clue what Judaism means. No, you erased him. He's not Breslever. No, he's not an FFB. No, he's not this. He's not that. Who are you? The angel of death that you're marking everyone? Who are you? Stop marking. Stop judging. Relax. When you're judging, you're being judged. Don't judge yourself. When David and King David judged someone else, the prophet told him, you judged yourself. King David had the ability to say on that, you're right. I sinned and now I'm going to do tshuva. <laughs> I'm wondering if that rabbi will do tshuva after hearing my class. I'm wondering. I'll bless him. I hope you will. To do tshuva, it's to recognize the light out of the darkness. That's to do tshuva. So every time that you see some light, so go for that with all your power. It's in music, go for it. It's in food, go for it. You found a spark, you feel godliness, you feel inspired, you feel passion, go, do it. You will find Hashem over there. Don't worry, don't be scared. Hashem will protect you. If your intention is to find Hashem, is to come back to Hashem, Hashem can help you to come back to Him through music, through videos, from movies, through I don't know what. Trips to the Far East, you're going to find Hashem over there and there you're going to be glued completely to Hashem and you will come back completely to Hashem. And you won't lack a thing in your path. You're not going to lose a thing in your path. Nothing you're going to lose. Hashem will protect your journey. Hashem will bring you to the right place. Hashem will bring you to the right result. Hashem will bring you to perfection. To find Him and to recognize Him completely. Why? Because your heart was honest and straight. And you followed your heart. Like Hashem Barach said, Give me your heart and I'm going to lead you in a new path. That's what Hashem told us in the hand of the prophets and the righteous ones. Only the heart is important. And you should serve Hashem Barach to love Him even with your evil inclination, even with the negative thoughts, even when you have lusts and desires and confusions and sadnesses, you should love Hashem in those dark and awful hours. You should love Hashem. You should connect yourself to Hashem. Now you found yourself drunk, okay? It's not good to drink. You don't want to do that. But you found yourself now drunk and crawling on the floor, dead after one bottle of whiskey. You're done. You're finished. You're barely going to make it home. You see it clearly. It's the worst, one of the worst nights of your life, right? Now there is a commandment for a person like you. Now you are commanded to love Hashem. How? How are you going to keep that commandment? You feel such disgrace. You vomit all over the place. You feel disgrace so bad. 
It's a shame. People saw you. People gonna talk about it. It's a disgrace. How are you gonna love Hashem? You embarrassed yourself in public. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna love Hashem right now? I'll tell you how. Because Hashem Yidbarach was protecting you right now. First of all, you don't know from which judgments, real dangerous judgments, Hashem saved you and humiliated you now instead of really pouring your blood in a different place. You don't know how much Hashem was saving you and shame came again instead of real punishment. That's one. Second is that you have a good, good reason why you're drinking. Maybe you're not talking about it, but you in front of the mirror, in front of your heart, you know why you're drinking. Because you've been abused, because you've been hurt, because you are, you know what, and that's why you're drinking. And you know that without that alcohol, you're not going to make it. So it's true that you're paying a heavy price every time that you drink, but you know that without that drink, you wouldn't survive until today. So also the fact that Hashem took you to that lousy place, there is a very, very big and great and important reason and a purpose for that. So love Hashem for that. Thank Hashem for that. A student of mine called me and he told me, I'm smoking weed, I'm smoking drugs, light drugs. And he said, I'm done. I don't know what to do. All of the rabbis that I'm speaking with, everyone are telling me to quit smoking, that it's damaging me, that it's destroying me, that I cannot continue. And I also know that it's not good for me and I'm not waking up in the mornings. I cannot do this and I cannot do that. And I'm this and I... Yeah, 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 I hear you. I ask him, okay, I'm going to ask you now a serious question. What's going to happen to you in one month from today if you're going to stop? Tell me the truth. What's going to be the answer? How are you going to handle life without smoking weed? Are you going to make it or not? He said, for sure not. I told him, so keep on smoking. It's not good. Okay, don't smoke. Okay, but I'm going to kill myself. Okay, so smoke. You don't need to be a genius. Check yourself. Reality with eyes of truth. Are you going to kill yourself? Yes. So smoke. Please smoke. I'll buy you. What do you need? How much? If you're going to kill yourself, you're allowed to violate Shabbos and not to die. No. Why not? Why to be so strict? You're going to lose the guy. You're going to lose the father. He's got a family. He's got children. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying that you not allowed to kill yourself. That's for sure. Right? Right. Okay, so don't. Only you can be honest with yourself and judge yourself in every situation. We're not permitting smoking, we're not permitting drinking, we're not permitting violating Shabbos. We're just saying it's your responsibility to finish this race, to live long life of serving Hashem Barach every moment of your life. That's your responsibility, it's your mission. Now, if you're honest and you're judging yourself every day and asking yourself from a point of truth, am I doing right? Am I doing the best that I can? while checking your background, your history, your mixed emotions, your destructions, your trauma, your scars, your scratches, your, your, your twisted mind, your foreign thoughts, your depressions, your sadnesses. Now, out of understanding and checking and reviewing all of your curriculum, all of your history, and now you're checking yourself. Am I allowed to drink or not? Okay, now you're allowed to judge yourself and to try to do the best that you can. That's what you need to do. And if you judge yourself, so be brave and take the strongest and most brave decisions of them all and choose life. Even if it looks like death. Even if it doesn't look promised at all. If your eyes are aiming for the truth, if your heart is aiming for the right purpose to live, to survive, to make it, to be good, to be strong, to be nice, to be pleasant. So go for it. Against the opinions of all of the wide world, of all of the rabbis and so-called rabbis. Don't listen to no one. Follow the truth. 
follow your truth, not my truth, your truth. Divrei met Nikarim, you have the ability to recognize words of truth. So speak to yourself and find the truth of your inside. The real message of Hashem Barach to you from inside, find it. The hand of the private supervision on you, find it. Find the real hints of the Creator to you and don't care in 100% what no one else will say about you. As long as you found about yourself that you're willing to find the truth, that you're willing to do the right thing, that you're trying with all of your heart to do the right thing. If you found out about yourself that you are being honest in your search for the truth, so go and be honest. Even if other people won't accept your path, your way, your attitude, your approach, <coughs> blow them with the wind. Let them disappear with the dust. Don't look back. Go to Hashem and you will find Him. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.